a gunshot wound to the neck can be a very serious injury. The neck is a very sensitive area and even a small bullet can do a lot of damage. If the bullet hits the spinal cord, it can cause paralysis. If it hits the carotid artery, it can cause a stroke. And if it hits the jugular vein, it can cause massive bleeding. There are a few things that you can do if you or someone else has a gunshot wound to the neck. First, try to keep the person calm. It is important to not move the person too much, as this can cause further damage. If the bleeding is uncontrolled, try to apply pressure to the wound. If the person is having trouble breathing, try to open their airway by tilting their head back and lifting their chin. And if the person is not breathing, start CPR right away. This simulation will walk you through the various processes of treating a patient with a gunshot wound in the neck. First click on the patient tab to review vital information about the patient. This will give you some important clue on how to diagnose the problem. If the patient is unconscious, move him or her to be examined. Next, open the exam tab. Attach the cardiac monitor to reveal the patient's current vitals. You should now perform physical by clicking on all relevant examinations that are appropriate given the circumstances. Don't get lost in the weeds though, examining everything is inefficient and some examinations will be unnecessary. The Stabilize tab lets you quickly perform some of the most critical actions for stabilizing an unstable patient, including intubation. Vital signs are vital and acting on them early is essential to intubate the patient, you must prepare all necessary equipment, pre-oxygenate, and choose your drugs. This can be done at any time of the case, but if the patient is critically ill on arrival, you should consider doing this before moving on. ABCs come first. By now you should have in mind a few possible diagnoses for the patient. Open the differential tab and select any link that could reasonably be wrong with the patient. Typically, the list should include three to five potential diagnoses. Full code includes a set of all possible diagnoses derived from the ABEMM model, tailored to each case to include those most relevant by organ system. One of your choices in the differential tab will hopefully be your final diagnosis, you'll select that in handoff tab. In the investigate tab you can choose all the bedside tests, labs and imaging studies that will help you narrow down your differential to arrive at a final diagnosis. Select all investigations that are relevant and click Perform. Results will appear below as soon as they return. Beware of overtest ing as you will be downscored for it. The results may help you narrow your differential, but leave them on your list so you can receive credit for thinking of them at the end of the case. The Intervene tab is where you really start definitively treating the patient. Choose the right meds and procedures to further stabilize and treat your patient. As with all tabs, choose all of the indicated interventions as outlined. Choose wisely as many of the drugs and procedures in here are harmful and can significantly lower your final score if not indicated. The Communicate tab gives you a selection of specialists that you can consult with regarding the patient. In many cases, it is important to bring in a specialist to help treat a patient. Some patients may have friends, family members, or coworkers who can provide more context around the case. As with everything you do, time is of the essence. Inadvisable consultations can waste time, which will negatively affect your score. In the Handoff tab, you will need to determine the final disposition of the patient and select your final diagnosis. Both are critical and without correct answers, your patient, and your score, will not fare well. Once you hand off the patient, the game is done and you will be presented with your score, along with some optional hints for improving your next attempt. With all, tabs closed, you can observe the patient. Move around the room with the arrows at the bottom and swipe to look in different directions. The scene will reflect the current state of your patient. You can click on the various pieces of equipment in the room to bring up a menu of related actions. This is an alternate to the procedures section under the intervention tab and a quicker way to perform certain actions. Clicking on the nurse will let you ask for a variety of hints. Asking for these hints will not affect your score, but might make the case too easy, try without hints first. The tabs are presented in the most typical order of a workup, but you don't need to proceed in the order suggested by the tabs. Feel free to jump around and treat the patient in the same order, you would in real life. Getting the order right can make the difference for your patient's outcome. You should now be ready to diagnose and treat this patient. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop them in the comment box below.